Well, hi, everybody. Very happy to have this chance to tell you a little bit about my background in artificial life. I am Ken Stanley, and um, I'm going to start with uh, what sparked my interest in the field. For me, the interest in artificial life started with artificial intelligence. Um, I've been interested in artificial intelligence since I was something like eight years old. I was interested in getting computers to act like human beings through programming. That was really compelling to me, even at the age of eight. And I eventually started to realize that in my in my view, like the best opportunity for that would be to do something like um, recapitulate the way that intelligence arose in nature. And that's sort of where it started to to border on artificial life. You know, because you could actually think about it as if there's like really two big ways to get to AI. And you got to also remember, this is like many years ago that I was thinking about this. But uh, back then, like there's basically looked like two big paradigms. Like one is, let's try to reverse engineer the brain, just like figure it out, figure out how it works uh, by our sheer intelligence. We'll just analytically figure it out. Or, you know, I always thought that that was just probably a lost cause, like much too hard. And so the alternative is maybe we could do it by trying to figure out the process through which the brain was created. And then instead of trying to redesign the brain, redesign the process that leads to the brain. And of course, the process that leads to the brain is this open-ended process of discovery, which is evolution or natural evolution on earth. And I became very interested in the evolution of brains. And then of course, that starts to really get into artificial life stuff. I mean, I was looking at, you know, the idea of like, how could uh, an open-ended system like produce intelligence and, and open-ended is a key word. You know, I've been going around for many years talking about open-endedness and I always had an interest, even though I might not have used that word, but in this idea of a system that keeps on producing interesting stuff forever, like the way evolution does and also the way civilization, human civilization does. And so I wanted to understand how could we create an open-ended process in particular that might lead to like really high level intelligence. And that just brought me close to the A-Life community and I just independently started to realize I just really like A-Life. Like I just even put artificial intelligence aside, put AGI aside. I just find it really interesting to think about these kinds of um, open-ended ecosystems and what makes them really powerful. And the fact that kind of similarly to AI or AGI, we don't actually know how to create one on a computer. And that just was, to me, just very compelling. You can read textbooks about evolution. Um, you can think you understand it. But we don't know how to create something as amazing as what happened on Earth. And so that just got me really interested. Um, and so uh, an exciting or surprising finding that I had. Well, probably the most exciting finding that related to artificial life was the discovery that led to novelty search. Um, and it was from doing this pick breeder system where we were letting people breed images online. And we discovered this and, and by the way, like why we would do that is because it leads to an open-ended explosion. Like if you let people breed pictures online through a kind of like a evolutionary art system, which is what we did, like with people, people were able to branch off each other's discoveries. Then of course, it's a divergent system. Like people find images and then people breed more images off of that and so forth. And we found this like really profound, amazing property of the system that I didn't anticipate which is that when people found meaningful images, and, and you got to remember, this is like years and years before stuff like Dolly, like this stuff didn't exist yet. People were just evolving um, primitive representations, actually, that were like small CPPNs or like little neural networks that are producing these images. And we found that the when people found things like that looked like something, like it could look like a butterfly or like a skull or a car, they actually looked like things, which at the time was quite remarkable, given that like 99.999% of the space was total garbage. And what we found is that when they found those types of things, they were not looking for them. I mean, maybe I should repeat that because it's hard to kind of digest at first if you haven't heard it before. But we found that when people would discover something interesting on PicBreeder, like a butterfly, it was always the case that the stepping stones along that path of breeding were not like butterflies because the people who led to that discovery were not looking for butterflies. So the only way to find things was to not be looking for them. And that's because of deception. That's because actually the things that lead to things that we want to find actually don't look like those things, which is what we call deception. And this is not just a general property of pick breeders, a general property of the entire world. And this is what really blew my mind, 
is that, look, the entire world has this property because deception is ubiquitous. After all, if you knew how to solve a problem, that basically means you know what the stepping stones are that lead to it. And the whole reason that there are hard problems is because we don't know what the stepping stones are because they actually don't look like the solution. It's just, to me, it was just a profound insight, which is very disturbing in a lot of ways because it suggests that like lots of the way we do things, which are very objectively driven in our society are probably wrong, especially when it's in service of things like innovation, like research. Having an objective can be actually toxic to discovery. And so that's a big insight. Um, and it led to Joel Amon and I, we like actually created an algorithm based on this. We said, let's create an algorithm that doesn't have an objective, that is loyal to the spirit of this principle, which we called novelty search. And that led to the whole field of quality diversity. It led Joel and I to write an entire book about this, like this book here, Why Greatness Cannot Be Planned. And it was um, like a really exciting time. Uh, to fall upon something like that, which I think is certainly in the spirit of open-ended systems and artificial life. And finally, uh, what are some, what is it? One big unanswered question in the field of artificial life that could be important for the future, important in the future. Well, I think that the big question for artificial life that continues to fascinate me is how to create a genuinely open-ended process completely automated inside of a computer. Something where whatever is happening there, which it could be that creatures are evolving, or it could be that there's an intelligent society of large language models talking to each other, whatever it is. In other words, I'm just saying it doesn't have to be evolution because think about it, like open-ended processes can exist outside of evolution like in civilization, but that would tend to ride on top of intelligence. Either way, whatever it is, whatever this holy grail would be, we don't know how to do it. We haven't succeeded in doing that. Could you just start some system, you know, press the go button on your computer and just leave it alone for a year, 10 years, a million years, a billion years, and expect that something amazing would be happening when you came back? And the answer is basically no. There's nothing. We don't know how to do this. We've made progress. It's absolutely, or certainly we've made progress. I think novelty search was an important insight. There were Later insights, like the poet algorithm that I was involved in later in later years. Um, but I don't think that we can still recapitulate the grandiose glory of nature itself. It just, we don't know how to do it. And just like with AGI or human intelligence, I consider it a holy grail like that, like the to as long as we cannot accomplish this, we are missing something fundamental in understanding how all of the complexity of the world arose out of nothing, effectively nothing, or out of effectively a disorganized mess. Um, and that's a very fundamental question that if we could answer satisfyingly, in other words, build something like the world, uh, the power of that would be incredible from a creative perspective and could be harnessed for all kinds of useful things. And so I remain uh, very interested in this question um, to this day and hope you guys will help to solve it in the coming years. So thanks for this chance. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope to get to meet some of you all sometime soon. Take care.